Amen. Along this journey, the failure has been in me. Yes, sir. But I can testify that God is faithful. faithful. Amen. And I thank you for his grace and his mercy, even though in my failure, amen, he extended mercy. Yes, sir. Amen. Forgiveness. And I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And I want thank the Lord, Lord to know that my desire is to walk in the light. Yes, sir. Amen. And stay in the light. Praise thank the Lord. Lord. Because I still want to be a son being amen for jesus amen. praise amen. the lord so we're grateful thanking god for everything that he has done getting ready to go before the lord in prayer amen. amen remembering all of the saints of god far there continue to remember the bereaved family amen the lord will continue to comfort and bless them backsliders and sinners yes. and that most of all the lord will bless his word that it will find root in the hearts of women boys and girls yes and that we will not just be hearers only but we will certainly be hearers and doers of the word yes sir. for it's not the hearers that are justified in the sight of god but those that obey and do it amen so this time we're going to ask deacon presley amen, amen to lead us to the throne of grace in jesus name thank you Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being in the house of prayer once again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for waking up this morning, you, starting our way, activity of a limb, blood on our vein. Grace the Lord, Lord, let us stand by today, Lord. Ladies and gallows, right now, help us look to the hill, which coming our help. Rely on our help is coming for you, bless those that sick, those that shit in our Lord, let our pastor give him the strength. Bless his home and his family. It's a little, 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 Thank you, Deacon Presley, and praise the Lord to the saints of God. Praise the Lord to those that view the Lord's telecast. Amen. Amen. We have come this far. Amen. By faith. Amen. Amen. And the faith is the faith of the Son of God. Amen. And we're grateful tonight, thanking God for His loving kindness and His tender mercies. Thank God. Amen. That Today he reminds us and let us know, amen, what time of year that we're in. Yes. But you know, I thought about how good God has been to us. Oh, yes. Amen. Years ago, amen, there were times that this building had no air conditioning. That's right. Amen. amen. We had a big fan. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Have opened up the window, but we still had church. Yes, sir. Amen. But I thank God that God has been good to us. Yes, he has. Amen. Yes, he has. coming from the heart. Amen. Into a nice, cool building. Man, Amen. Sure. Don't tell me God is not mm. good. Yes, he There's is. There's nothing good yeah. about us, all right? It's only the goodness of the Lord goodness that the Lord. the Lord have blessed us. And I'm grateful because I realize that many of the saints here, amen, are up in age. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Have certain conditions. Man. Amen. And we're just grateful that the Lord have blessed and allowed us to have air yes. condition. Yes. Amen. In this building. That we all feel comfortable right now. What a difference it is Man, compared from outside to inside. Yes. Amen. But we're grateful. There are many today that don't have what we have. That's right. And they're still carrying on. Is that right? Amen. 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 We thank God for all things. So tonight, I want you to pray for us and pray with us as we embark. Amen. On doing the Lord's word. Bless you, Amen. And we pray that the Lord's word will find root bring forth that they will fall on good ground. And that's what the Word of God is all about. It's not about you, it's not about me. And I often say I don't know it all. Mm -hmm. I would never know it all. And I, care, I want to say I don't feel bad saying that. Oh, no. I feel relieved. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Just let the world know that I don't know it all. Oh, no. Amen. And I'm still in the learning business. And I'm going to stay in that learning business until either Jesus comes or mm -hmm. until I go by the grave, but I'm going to stay in the learning school. Man. And the Lord can teach me and instruct me in the ways because there are things that if the Holy Ghost don't reveal it, can't nobody have it. 
Amen. And I believe y'all know one of my favorite scripture, Amen. Deuteronomy 32. Right? The secret thing belongs to God. Uh, and the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children, that we may obey, that we may do it. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we ask you to please turn your Bibles, amen, to the book of Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2, we shall be reading from verse number 1. We're going to read verses 1 through verse All right, verses one through verse, we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop at verse number four. Amen. All right. All right, Deacon, go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, mm -hmm. they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. Keep on reading. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse, chapter, verse five. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, one of every nation under heaven. All right, so we'll stop right there. We want to, by the grace of God, the Holy Ghost helping me, amen, to talk about Pentecost. All right. Praise the Lord. To talk about Pentecost. Amen. There are many people that read this chapter and really don't know the history of sure. Pentecost. Sure, sure. Praise the Lord. So that's what we endeavor to do tonight, to sit down and to do some research, and do some reading, amen. that we can gain a knowledge, amen, concerning the Word of God. But when you think about Pentecost, amen, the Lord Jesus had told His apostles, amen, go back to Jerusalem, uh -huh. uh, and tarry there and wait until you be endued with power from on high. Uh -huh. Amen. I believe in Luke also that he instructed them, amen, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but they should wait, wait, amen, for the Comforter, because the reason why Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the second place in history that God placed his name at. All right. Amen. The first place was Shiloh, Amen, but then God forsook Shiloh. Amen, but then he chose Jerusalem, amen, to place his name there because of the temple that David built. Amen. Praise the Lord. Solomon built, praise the Lord. So we want to talk about Pentecost, praise the Lord. And we know that the apostles there, approximately what, 120 of them yes. went back to the upper room because Jesus was ascended, he ascended, and he was taken away out of their sight. Amen. And they went back to the upper room mm -hmm. because the angel told them, Ye men of Galilee, yes. why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Mm -hmm. This same Jesus that you see that is taken up is coming back like man. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. But I'm glad that they obeyed what Jesus said. And even Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in the number. All right. Man. Praise the Lord. And they all went back to the upper room and they began to wait. All right. They began to wait. We don't know exactly what they did. Praise the Lord. But all we know, they went back to the upper room and they began to wait. Amen. So now, as I begin to think about Pentecost, praise the Lord, did you know when this thing started, Pentecost is not even the Jewish name for the feast. Pentecost is the Greek name. Mm -hmm. The Jews never call it Pentecost. They call it Feast of Harvest or Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. All right, now, it's going to take a little while to digest all of this, but you study it and you'll get it also. All right, but when you read the day of Pentecost, it was never called that by the Jews. All right, that's the Greek form, praise the Lord, of the Feast of Weeks 
or the Feast of Harvest. All right, so remember, it's a feast, praise the Lord, of harvest or weeks. But then the Greek form of it is called Pentecost, mm -hmm. meaning 50 day. All right, Pentecost means 50 day. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let us go also now. We're going to start establishing. Let's go to the book of, there are a few chapters you can go to, but I want to focus on Leviticus chapter number 23. And I shall go through, amen, some of the feasts, not all of them, all right? But I'm going to go through some of them and give you some information in regards to some of the feasts. That God told Israel, amen, that they should observe throughout the year, amen, and throughout their lifetime. Mm -hmm. All right, so Leviticus, Genesis, Exodus, and then Leviticus. All right, so Genesis, the first book, Exodus, the second, Leviticus, the third. Mm -hmm. All right, so Leviticus chapter number 23, verse number one. All right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. All right, so these feasts is not the children of Israel that instituted it, but it was the Lord himself that instituted all of these feasts. Now, all of them have meaning behind it. Yes. All right, go on. Six days shall work be done. All right, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest mm -hmm. and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. All right, so now you, you notice now God told them six days you shall work. Six days. All right, but on the seventh day, amen, it shall be a day of rest. Yes. All right, so that Israel don't have to work, amen, round the clock. Mm -hmm. God set aside a day for them, for them to rest, amen, and it was a time for them to give God glory amen. and thank God for his goodness that he had blessed them with on those six days. Yes. All right, but not only that also, but even Israel was given, amen, what is known as the, the, the Sabbath year. All right. All right. And the Sabbath year now was the time where the field, all right, the field would give itself some rest mm -hmm. from the plowing and from planting and so forth. So they had to give the field, praise the Lord, a certain amount of time so that the field even can rest. Wow. All right. So not only did God wanted man to rest, but he wanted the soil, he wanted the field, he wanted the earth to give it some rest. Man. All right. Now go on reading, Deacon. These are the feasts of the Lord. All right. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocation. All right. Even holy convocation. Which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month. All right. In the 14th day of the first month. At eve. At eve. In the Lord's Passover. All right. So notice now the first one is what? The, the feast of what? Passover. Yes. All right. So now the, the year of the feast of Passover. Now, I, 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 I just hold that, Deacon, but yes. there is one that I forgot. They call it the year of Jubilee. All right. All right. And the year of Jubilee was a time set aside, I believe it was every 50 years. Uh -huh. All right. That they were supposed to, if there was any outstanding debts. All right. You didn't go collect it. You forgive the person. Mm -hmm. All right. It was a year of release. All right. All right. There were certain servants that they had to release and they had to let them go. Mm -hmm. All right. It was a time that you forgive and, and, and God even warned Israel. Now, don't think, all right, the time is coming up for the year of release. But in your heart, you're still thinking evil of that person, and you don't want to release them. All right. Bishop. So God said, don't be like that. But when that time come, amen, observe what I say to you, carry it out, and do it. All right. If anybody owe you, praise the Lord, just let it go. Let it go. All right. Don't go asking for it at this time of the year. It is called the year of jubilee. Mm -hmm. All right. A time of release. 
All right. Now, also now, from the year of Jubilee, then we go into the year of what? Passover. Uh -huh. All right. Now, the Passover represents the time that God delivered Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's right. All right. What is known as Passover. Mm -hmm. All right. Remember what the Lord told Israel. He instructed them yeah. to take the blood. All right. Kill the lamb, take the blood from the basin. Mm -hmm. All right, they had to drain the blood in a basin, and then they had to take a plant, what is known as hyssop. Mm -hmm. All right, and they had to take the hyssop and then dip it in the blood, and then take the blood and put it on the lintel or the doorpost. Uh -huh. All right, because the Lord said the destroyer is coming through the land. And when I see the blood, yeah. all right, the Lord said, I will pass over you. All right, so this is where the word Passover came about mm -hmm. because the Lord passed over the children of Israel. All the house that had the blood on the doorpost, the Lord passed over them. Mm -hmm. All right, and it was, it was in the month of Abib. All right, and now Passover, if you, if you observe the Jews, it is usually around March, April. All right, that's the time that they celebrate what? Passover. All right. All right, now, read on, Deacon, then we're going to come to the next one. And on the 15th day of the same month, mm -hmm. in the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. All right. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. All right, so now, now within the Passover is what is known as the what? The Feast of what? Unleavened Bread. Yes. Now, the reason why it is called Unleavened Bread, you that are bakers and know what I'm talking about, is basically a dough without yeast in it. That's right. All right, now the reason why God told them to continue to observe this is because on the night that the destroyer came through, Israel had their dough. Mm -hmm. All right, because, because it was going to be in such of a hurry that God was going to deliver them, they did not have time to apply yeast to the dough. All right, and in other words, to give it time to raise right. and, and dry and so forth and bake it. They didn't have time for that. No time. All right, and even when it came to the Passover, they had to put their sandals on. That's right. And they had to eat the Passover mm -hmm. while they were already dressed. Mm -hmm. Because immediately after eating the Passover, it was time for them to leave Egypt. That's yes, right. All right. So now on that night, amen, there was no yeast found in the dough. So God told Israel now, you understand, concerning the Feast of Unleavened. It was a time where they were not supposed to eat nothing baked or no bread with yeast in it. All right, that is why it is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. All right, read on. In the first day. All right, now let me say this. This also is the same timing as the Passover, all right? Uh -huh. In the month of March and April. Uh -huh. All right, read on. In the first day. In the first day. You shall have an holy convocation. You're going to have a holy convocation. You shall do no servial work therein. All right, you do no work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Seven days. Seven days. And in the seventh day. In the seventh day. It is an holy convocation. It is a holy convocation. You shall do no servial work therein. All right. So it's a time of rejoicing and being grateful and do no servile work in the other word, no work on that day. Yes, right. All right, read on now. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, All right, now the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. Say unto them, Say unto them, When ye be come into the land, When ye come into the land, Which I give unto you, Which I give unto you, What's the name of that land? Canaan. The land of Canaan that God promised Abraham yes. and his seed. Yes. So God now is saying, when you come into that land, when this God, is. Yes. So read that again. When you come, when you into, come the land, into the land, mm -hmm. which I will give unto which you. Which I will give unto you. Ye shall reap the harvest thereof. All right, you're going to reap the harvest thereof. 
Then he shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits. All right, you're going to bring a sheaf now of the first fruit. Of your harvest unto the priest. All right, so now notice now we're, we're dealing now with first fruit. Yeah, first. All right, and they have to bring the first sheaf. Yes. The first part of the crop. That's right. All right, and bring it to the priest. Yes. All right, but notice now the Lord always wants the first. All right. Now there, 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 there is some. There's a meaning to that. All right. All right. God said, "Now when the time comes for the harvest of first fruit, yeah. all right, which is also known as the barley harvest. Mm -hmm. All right. So first fruit, the feast of uh, or the harvest of first fruit, uh -huh. praise the Lord, is known as the time of barley harvest. Barley harvest. All right. So the first fruit now is the beginning." All right, of the barley harvest. This is a time where they begin to rejoice and thank God. So now, basically, the the, the, uh, the first fruit is just the first installment of the crop. Yes. All right, of the harvest that is to come. Mm -hmm. All right, now, the first fruit have a meaning to it. Mm. All right, mm. first fruit have a meaning to it. Now, I believe we just read they were supposed to take the first sheaf yes. and bring it to the priest. Yes. All right. And then the priest will do what to it? And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. All right. Now the priest is going to take it and wave it before the Lord to be accepted for you. All right. So notice now, God said now it is supposed to be what? Accepted for who? For you. For you. So remember now the first all right, it's supposed to be waived, and it's supposed to be accepted for what? For you. Mm -hmm. All right, read on. On the morrow. On the morrow. After the Sabbath. After the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. The priest shall wave it. Mm -hmm. Now, let me explain this now. I praise the Lord. I think we, we will be stuck here, and then we'll let you go. Right. Amen. If the Lord's will, we'll be back again whenever. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. But now, let's deal with first fruit. All right. First fruit represents resurrection. All right, first fruit, all right, represents resurrection. Yeah. Now, let us go now to the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. All right. First fruit represents resurrection. Now, don't use the order. All right, the order is take the first sheep, bring it to the priest, let him wave it. Yes. All right, but later on down the harvest, you understand, there is more coming. Yes, sir. But the Lord said the first belong to me, mm -hmm. and the priest is supposed to wave it. And it's supposed to be waved to be accepted for the people. Yes. All right, now, 1 Corinthians Let's go now to chapter 15, uh -huh. verses 12. Verse 12. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 12. All right. All right, go on and read. Now, if Christ be preached. Now, if Christ be preached. That he rose from the dead. That he rose from the dead. How say some among you. How say some among you. That there is no resurrection. All right, so now some are claiming that there is resurrection of the dead. In other words, Christ never got up. Mm -hmm. Read on. But if there be no resurrection, if there be no resurrection of the dead, of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, now if Christ did not rise, then is our preaching vain. Alright, so our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Alright, so now Paul is saying, now, if, if, if Christ didn't get up, then the gospel message that we are preaching concerning how God raised him on the third day, and that repentance and so forth, got to be preaching his name, and salvation is only in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If Jesus didn't get up, mm -hmm. then our preaching vain, vain. and your faith, or your belief and what we preach is also vain. That's right. Read on. Yea. Yea. And we are found false witnesses of God. We are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God. Because we have testified of God. And he raised up Christ. Alright, so now he said, we now.
now are from false witnesses or liars because we have testified that God raised him from the dead. Yeah. All right, listen. If, if there's no resurrection from the dead, if Jesus never rose, praise the Lord, then everybody still is under the wrath of God yeah. and all are still in sin. That's right. Because the Bible said all have sinned and That's come right. short of the glory of God. Yeah. All right, so the main purpose now that Paul is drawing attention to is that because Christ is risen, mm. then, praise the Lord, our preaching and our message or the gospel that we are preaching, it is the true gospel. Yes. All right, read on. We have testified of God. We have testified of God. That he raised up Christ. That he raised up Christ. Whom he raised not up. Whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. If so be that the dead rise not. Read on. For if the dead rise not. If the dead rise not. Then is not Christ raised. So if, if, if nobody that died never rose, then we know that Christ is still dead and in the grave just like everyone else. That's right. Praise the Lord. Because we don't know, praise the Lord, of anyone that have went to the grave, praise the Lord, that came back. Now, there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. All right. We know that Moses died. Yeah. And God buried him. Yeah. Nobody know the burial place of Moses. That's right. All right. But God buried Moses. That's right. All right. God did that in order that Israel don't begin to worship, you understand, the grave site of Moses. Uh -huh. God said, I got to take him and I'm going to kill him and I'm going to bury him. All right. And even Satan disputed about the body of Moses. Yes, he did. Even Satan inquired of the Lord or inquired to Michael, yes. praise the Lord, where did God, um, praise the Lord, bury Moses? That's right. Bishop. Satan didn't even know where God buried Moses. I know. All right, but he disputed about the body of Moses according to Jude. So God killed Moses, praise the Lord, and God buried him. None of Israel, none of the Israelites know on this, up until this day where Moses was buried. That's right. All right. And the reason why I said God did that, so that the children of Israel don't go back and build a shrine out of Moses' gravesite. Mm -hmm. And that's what people do today. They build a shrine out of loved ones. Now, ain't nothing wrong, praise the Lord, in going back to the gravesite. No, I'm not talking about that. That's but right. I'm talking about, praise the Lord, putting all your hope in that person that is gone yeah. and you don't feel no need to move forward because remember now they were not in the promised land yet mm -hmm. and God knew what Moses meant to them yeah. so God said I can't leave this man here because if I leave the gravesite here yeah. Satan will tempt you now yeah. to turn Moses gravesite into a shrine All right, this will cause you to get in trouble and y'all ain't gonna get to the promised land because you're gonna get into what is known as idolatry mm. All right? Yes, sir. Now, read on. And if Christ be not raised, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Your faith is vain. One more other person is Elijah, but we know that Elijah didn't die. No, sir. All right? Elijah was caught up yes, in the fiery chariot. Both Elijah and Elijah was walking, and the fiery chariot came. All right? I believe it was Elijah. Elijah said, Master, That's Master. Uh, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Yes. So the chariot came from heaven, praise the Lord, a chariot of horse, yes. but it was all with fire. fire all right, and it parted both of them. That's right. Now the one that was left, he wasn't harmed by the fire. That's right. And the one that went up, there had to be a change concerning his physical body. Mm. All right, because remember this now, flesh and blood mm. cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we know that Elijah went somewhere. Mm. All right, because let me say this, on the Mount of Transfiguration, yeah. both Moses and Elijah appeared unto Jesus. That's right. All right, and they began to remind him of the purpose and the reason for this hour that he came upon. Mm -hmm. Now, Moses is a type of the resurrection. All right. All right. Elijah is a type of the catching away of the church. Mm. Now, we used to say rapture, but I don't use the word rapture anymore because the word rapture is not in the Bible, but the meaning of the word rapture is to be caught up. That's right. So I understand the context by which they use the word, but it's not a biblical 
one word. Mm. All right, to be caught up or to be snatched up or snatched away. Mm. All right, go on and read it. And if Christ be not raised, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sin. Ye are yet in your sin. Then they also, then they also, which are falling asleep, in which Christ, are falling asleep in Christ, are perished. Are perished. So Paul is saying, those that believe in Christ and die believing, yes. if Christ didn't get up, yes. then they are perished. That's right. All right. There is no hope for them. Mm -hmm. All right. When they died, that was it. Read on. If in this life only. Now Paul said, now if in this life only we have hope, we in, have Christ. hope in Christ. We are all men most men. Listen, our hope is beyond this life. Mm. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. If I'm living is Christ and if I die, I'm gain. Yeah. In other words, when you serve the Lord, you don't lose. Amen. All right? You don't lose your eternal life or your inheritance mm. pre-adventure or you understand as long as you stay within Christ. In the Bible. But if you get out of Christ, mm. then you will lose your inheritance. Yeah. All right, read on. But now is Christ risen from the dead. But now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruit. All right, of them. you see now this is what I want to get to. And become the first fruit of that sleep. Mm -hmm. So now the the the, the, uh, the first fruit harvest, you understand, which is also you can call it just that the beginning of the barley harvest. Uh -huh. All right, it represents resurrection. Yeah. All right, and this was also done in the month of May, um, April, March, and April. Uh -huh. Now this is all Jews. This is all the Jewish festival. None of this was given to heathen nation. None of it was given to Gentiles. All of it was given only to the Jewish people. And God told them to keep these things throughout their generation. All right? So that is why I said in the beginning now, when we say Pentecost, they didn't call it that. Pentecost is the Greek meaning of the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest. And now, remember this now, why not discuss this? Mm -hmm. Every year within Israel, there were three harvests. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, in time, what the Lord will do, he talked, they talked about in the Bible, a little while ago, my wife was talking to me, asking question. The Lord will say what? The former rain wow. and the latter rain. All right, now these were rain that God would send from heaven in order that the crops can grow. All right. All right, so that the, the children of Israel can be blessed. Mm. Now, without God sending the rain, they ain't going to get no crop and no harvest. no harvest. Now, I want you to picture this now. Remember now, where does the rain come down from? From heaven. The rain is coming down from heaven. Mm. Just like Isaiah said, uh, for as the rain descended from heaven, yeah. all right, and the snow yeah. come down from heaven, uh -huh. so is God's word that come down from heaven and accomplish what God sent it to do. Yeah. Remember this now, the rain doesn't go back up, and neither does the snow go back up, mm -hmm. but it accomplished watering the earth so that the earth can bring forth, you understand, fruit to those that does what? That all God and believe God's word. Yes. All right. So now Jesus now is known as the what? The first fruit. fruit. Uh -huh. All right. He is the first one to be what? Resurrected from the grave. Uh -huh. All right. And because now he's the first fruit and he resurrected from the grave. Remember now. Let me remember. They brought the first part yes. or the first installment of the crop. Right. But that was not the entire crop. That's right. There was more to come. That's the part. All right. Jesus, you understand, represents that first sheep mm -hmm. that the priest would wave. All right, Bishop. All right. So when the priest waved that first sheep, that was the Lord. Uh -huh. All right. And it had to be accepted right. by God yeah. for the people. All right, Bishop. So Jesus now had to pay the price. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? All right. Praise the Lord. Right. Jesus now had to pay the price yes. and he had to be the first one to die and become the first one to be risen from the dead. All right. And he had to be what? Accepted. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I tell you about something. All right, Bishop. Praise the Lord. Remember this now. Matter of fact, let's read. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't just black her. Let me just read it. Mm -hmm. All right. John chapter 20. Yeah. John chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Verse number. Let's start with verse number one. Verse number one yes. of John chapter 20. First day of the week. All right, now we're dealing with the first day of the week. Now let me say something. Mm -hmm. According to the Jewish belief, the first day of the week is what day? Anybody know? The first day of the week according to their calendar is what? Is Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right, Saturday is the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Now, before I close out, I'm going to explain Pentecost, and we'll close out with that. But remember now, the Jews uh, celebrate the, their Sabbath on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And the first day is what? Is Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, in the first day of the week, come it what? Mary, Mary Magdalene. Early. Early. When it was yet dark. When it was yet dark. Unto the sepulchre. Unto the sepulchre. And see if the stone taken away. And see if the stone was taken away. From so now let's stone. picture this now. All right. Let's say it's a Sunday. Yeah. She's there early Sunday morning. Still dark. All right. While it is still dark. Mm -hmm. Now, the Jews back then, they didn't cover a 24-hour period. All right, they covered only what is known as a 12-hour period. Mm -hmm. Their day, you understand, was 12 hours. But in modern time now, a day is classified as what? As 24 hours. Uh -huh. All right, now, and, and going back to Jesus, even when Jesus died, Jesus was on the cross from the 6th to the ninth hour. Uh -huh. Now, according to their calendar, that is from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. All right, and at three o'clock, that's when he cried out, you understand, I thirst. Mm -hmm. And after they gave him the vinegar to drink, he did what he said, Father, it is finished. Mm -hmm. And he gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. All right, so from one o'clock to three o'clock, Jesus was on the cross. Mm -hmm. And at three o'clock, that's when he died. You following me? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. All right, now. Go on now, read on. See the stone taken away. And they saw the stone take away. From the sepulchre. From the sepulchre. Then she run it. Then she run it. Coming to Simon Peter. Mm -hmm. Said to the other disciples, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid. And that's what the world have done today. They don't took Jesus and we don't know. Uh, Even the church boy don't lay him somewhere. I don't, you. Praise the Lord. He's resurrected. He's up, and folk got him, and they place him somewhere on the side of the street. Just metaphorically, me speaking. Praise the Lord. You understand? Yeah. They took Jesus, and they don't lay him aside somewhere. Mm -hmm. Read on. Peter therefore went forth, mm -hmm. and that other disciples, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together. And the other disciples did overrun Peter. All right. Came first to the sepulchre. Mm -hmm. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, mm -hmm. following him. Following him. And went into the sepulchre. Simon went in. And see if the linen clothes lie. All right. See if the linen clothes lie, you understand, that Jesus had on. Yeah. The napkin, the napkin that was about his head, that was about his head, not lying into the clothes, linen clothes, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. So when Jesus rose from the dead, praise the Lord, he folded the linen clothes and the napkin. Yes, sir. All right. So let you know that that Jesus, he, he, he's not someone that believes in having clothes all over the place. Mm -hmm. All right, Jesus was neat and he left it, you understand, as an example and as evidence that he is alive. All right. Read on. <coughs> then went in also that other disciple, mm -hmm. which came first to the sepulchre, 
And he saw and believed. And he saw and believed. For as yet, for as yet, they knew not the scripture mm -hmm. that he must rise again from the dead. That he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. So the disciples then went back to their own home. But Mary stood. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre. Mm -hmm. As she wept, as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. So you notice Mary, while she was there, she began to weep because she, she missed the master. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with crying if you lose a loved one. Praise the Lord. Even if you go to the graveside and you start crying again, it's the memories of the loved one that you remember. That's right. And you no longer have them physically anymore. So there's nothing wrong with crying. That's right. And that's what Mary was doing because, and most of all, they, they can't find him. Mm. He's gone. Uh. So that even brought even more sadness upon her. Not only did they kill him, but now we can't even find his body. Can't find his body. Read on. And seeing two angels in white sitting, uh -huh. one at the head. Two angels, she saw one at the head. And the other at the feet. And the other at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had laid. Where the body of Jesus had laid. You know, just real quick, you know, if you don't mind, I just want to share something. I, by no means do I feel like I'm anybody because all I am, I am what I am yeah. by the grace of God. Yeah. But... Why, when you just read that, it just brought back to me, and I would like to share something. I've sh shared it before. Mm -hmm. But I remember mm -hmm. when the late Bishop Bailey was in the hospital, and that was the first time that they um, was going to take his leg off. Yeah. I remember I got a, a, a ticket, praise the Lord, for trying to cut across in the middle of the highway, back onto the opposite um, side of the highway, going in a different direction. And you understand? And there was a police, and I didn't see him, and he came right behind me. Praise the Lord. My wife was there, and I got me a ticket. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to Rochester. All right, I had to go back to Rochester to pay the ticket, to pay the fine. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that time, Bishop was in the hospital, and me, I wanted to go see him before I leave. My wife didn't go with me that time, but I went there, and... and I called Mother Bailey and I said, Mom, can we please come and see Bishop? She said, yes, I want to see my Bishop before I leave Rochester. She said, come on. And at that time, she didn't want a whole lot of people coming because you know how people are. You, you got to monitor your visit because you got people who will go back and spread news. You understand? And they're after what's going on. Mm -hmm. And not everybody could have been able to see Bishop in that condition. You understand? So Mother Betty kept many people away. It's not that she was being mean, yeah. but there was a reason behind it. Yeah. And I remember, Sister Irma took me up there to the hospital to see Bishop. And when we got there to see Bishop Bailey, we walked in the room. <coughs> and I'm telling you, Mother Bailey was wise not to allow any anybody to go up to that hospital at that moment. Mm. When I walked in that room and Sister Irma walked in with me because she took me there, I didn't know where I was going, and there he was on that bed. And I've never seen the presiding officer in such a state of mind. Mm. I mean, Bishop Bailey was out of it. At all. Just to give you an example, he had a spoon in his hand. Mm. I think it was a spoon or a fork. And he didn't even know what it was. I know. He was talking out of his head. Praise the Lord. I don't know what was going on if the infection mm. had gotten to him and began to affect, it, you understand, him. Brain. But you understand his brain and so forth. But I remember I was sitting at his head and Sister Irma was sitting at his feet. And I remember vividly saints of God. A boy said to me, go and sit at his feet. And I said, go sit at his feet. Sister Irma got up, and I just went over there and sat. Now, she was so happy to know I went to his feet because she wanted a chance to get closer to him. So she went to the head, where the young stand, the head of the bed, where Bishop was laying. Mm. And I began to look at him, and I mean, Bishop Bailey was out of it. He, the man, didn't even know what a fork was. Mm. I mean, he was talking out of his mind. Mm. Why, mom, mother, so, so Irma was on the left, mother Bailey was on the right, and I was at the foot of the bed where Bishop Pete was. Yeah. 
and Bishop was laying down and he was just going through and just acting and just so straight and it was hard for me to see Bishop in that state of mind yeah. but saints of God I tell you no lie and the Holy Ghost is my witness and I got two other witnesses that was in that room Bishop Bailey rose up with so much strength he didn't even know I was there he didn't know Sister Irma was there but he rose up from that bed with such authority and he pointed straight to me at the, at the foot of the bed how he knew I was at the foot of the bed I don't know but he didn't know he was in the room mm -hmm. but he pointed to me and he said son say you want a blessing mm -hmm. I'm looking at him like um you know when somebody stung you, you don't know whether to cough, yeah. whether to sneeze, mm -hmm. whether to talk, or what, you don't know what to do. But he kept saying, son, mm -hmm. you want a blessing? Mm -hmm. And he kept saying, do you want a blessing? And I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm looking. So Mother Bailey said, get up. So I got up and I walked next to him. And I took his hand. Mm -hmm. We were waiting to see what he would do. Guess what? Mm. He just, he didn't do nothing. Once I held his hand, he held my hand, and he wouldn't do nothing. He just stayed there and, uh, uh, mm. and he just kept going through. Then Mother Bailey, it clicked. The Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost let Mother Bailey know there's a reason why he ain't doing nothing. But Mother Bailey said, Elder, Minister, take his hand and put it on your head. Mm. And when I took his hand and put it on my head, mm. I am talking about immediately, Bishop started praying a prayer, mm. and it was one of those prayers that will cause your knees to start shaking. My Lord. But he prayed such a powerful prayer. My Lord. And I prayed that he prayed. And immediately after he stopped praying, his hands fell down and he kept going through. <sighs> mm. Right back into that state. Mm. Now me, I'm shaking. Mm. And I'm looking at Mother Bailey. Mm. I'm looking at Sister Irma. They're all looking at me. Mm. We're looking at each other like, what just happened? Mm. Mm. Then after that, when Sister Irma realized what Bishop just did, she came next to the man and said, Bishop, you ain't got a blessing for me? Bishop never did anything. He never came out of that state anymore. He never prayed again. Mm. I give this testimony because of what you just read. Yes, yeah, Bishop. Sure. But the prayer that he said, he said, Son, you want a blessing? Mm. Whatever that blessing was, I thank God for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, Bishop. And when he came out of the hospital, and I reminded him, I said, Bishop, did you know such and such happened? He said, son, I didn't know nothing. What you say to me, I have no idea what you're talking about. I know. But I rehearsed the story unto him. He said, son, mm. I didn't know nothing. Holy Ghost. But whatever happened, mm. there is a reason why it happened. Yes. But he said, I don't know you came in the room, and I can't remember praying for you. I can't remember nothing. Oh. Praise the Lord. So I, I rehearsed that story, you understand, because it was one at the head yes. and one at the feet, two angels. Yes. And remember now, I ain't nobody, all right? I am what I am by the grace of I God. So don't God. treat me those higher than what God's word say. Keep me where the word of God say, all right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Read on, deacon. See him two angels in white. See two angels in white. Sitting one at the head, mm -hmm. the other at the feet. One at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had laid. Mm -hmm. And they said unto her. They said unto her. Woman. Woman. Why weepest thou? Why weepest thou? She said unto them. She said unto them. Because they have taken away my Lord. They have taken away my Lord. And I know not. And when she had thus said, when she had thus said, she turned herself, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, mm -hmm. and knew not that it was Jesus. And she knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Jesus said unto her, Woman, woman, why 
weeping thou? Why weepest thou? Who seeking thou? Who are you seeking for? She supposed him to be the gardener. She thought he was in the, the gardener. Said unto him. Said unto him. Sir. Sir. If thou have borne him hence, mm -hmm. tell me where thou have laid him, and I will take him away. And I will take him away. Jesus said unto her. Jesus said unto her. Mary. Mary. She turned herself. All right, and she turned herself. Said unto him. And said unto him. Rabboni. Rabboni. Which is to say. Which is to say. Master. Master. And Jesus said unto her. And Jesus said unto her. Touch me not. All right. Jesus said. In other words, Jesus said, no, stop clinging to me. Mm -hmm. Let go of me. Yeah. You understand? Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended. For I am not yet ascended. To my father. To my father. But go to my father. All right. But I ain't yet ascended to my father. Listen to what he said. Yeah. I'm not yet ascended to my father. Yeah. But go. To my brother. And to my brother. Say unto them. Say unto them. I ascend unto them. Get there real quick. 
Hebrews chapter 9. Let's start at verse, verse, matter of fact, let's start at verse number one. Go ahead, start at verse number one. Then really, mm -hmm. the first covenant and also ordinances of divine service mm -hmm. and a worldly sanctuary. There was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick, and the first table mm -hmm. with the shoe bread, yes. which is called the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. At, after the second veil, mm -hmm. the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. The holiest of all. Which had the golden censer. Which had the golden censer. And the ark of the covenant. All right, the ark of the covenant is what God gave to them. Overlaid round about with gold. Red, all right. Wherein was the golden pot. Where was the golden pot. That had manna. That, no, the manna represents God's provision for the children of Israel in the wilderness. Yeah. All right. And Aaron's rod that budded. And Aaron's rod that budded. The reason why God kept Aaron's rod that budded is to remind the people that God is the one that chose Aaron to be the high priest. Mm -hmm. Read on. Tables of the covenant. The tables of covenant. And over it, was and, the over, over, over it, the cherubim mm -hmm. of glory, of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, shattering the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. All right, we cannot speak about, but the mercy seat represents the throne. Yeah. All right. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle. Accomplishing the service of God. All right. But into the second with the high priest alone. Mm -hmm. Once every year. Once every year. Not without blood. Not without blood. Which he offered for himself. Which he offered for himself. And for the heirs of the people. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. This signifies mm -hmm. that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Mm -hmm. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. All right. Which was a figure of the time then present. It was a figure or it foreshadowed the Messiah or the high priest, which is Jesus. Yes. Read on. In which were offered both gifts mm -hmm. and sacrifices. And sacrifices. That could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. All right. Which stood only in meats and drinks mm -hmm. and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Yes. But Christ. But Christ. Being come and high priest. Being come a high priest. Of good things to come. Of good things to come. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Not made with hand. Not made with hand. That is to say. That is to say. Not of this building. Mm -hmm. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood. He entered in once. All right, by his own blood, he entered in what? Once. Into the holy place. Into the holy place. Having obtained eternal redemption. Having obtained eternal redemption. For us. For us. So this is why Jesus said, stop clinging to me. Yes. All right, let me go. Praise the Lord. You understand? I, I have to offer myself. You understand? Before God. Yes. I got to go into the presence of God. Yes. Now, as I begin to read something, someone asked me a question. Well, when did Jesus go to heaven after he died? When did that presentation, when was that presentation made? I'm about to give you the answer. According to scripture. Go back to John. Go back to John. Verse number 15. Uh, let's let's verse 17. Go 17. Touch me not. Touch me not. Mm -hmm. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. And your God. Mary Magdalene came. Alright, so now we're talking about Sunday, alright? According to the Jewish belief. Yeah. This happened, Jesus rose according to them on Sunday. Yeah. All right, read on. Mary Magdalene came mm -hmm. 
Told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She had seen the Lord. And that he had spoken these things unto her. That he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at All evening, right, stop right there. Yeah. Now remember, they went early to the graveside. Early. Early. Before dark. All right. Early it was still dark. Yes, sir. She came into contact with Jesus, and Jesus told her to go and tell them, you understand, that I must ascend. Yeah. All right. Now, read on. Read something. And then the same day, mm -hmm. at evening. At when? Evening. All right. So now, listen, we're still giving what the same day. Same From day. morning out to evening. Yes, sir. Read on. Being the first day of the week. It is the same first day of the week. When the doors were shut. When the doors were shut. Where the disciples were assembled. All right. Now, Jesus went to heaven according to what we're reading yes. the same day Thank he you. rose. That's right. Because this is an evening. Now. Praise the Lord. So we went from early in the morning to evening. Uh -huh. All right. When the disciples were together and the door was shut. Mm -hmm. So we no longer have to figure out when he went to heaven as the high priest the first time. When Jesus ascended to stay in heaven, that was not the first time he ascended. That was the second time that Jesus ascended. Because as the high priest, you understand, he had to go and make a presentation. Just like the high priest did in the Holy Yes of Holy. So Jesus went to heaven when he rose, you understand, after he spoke to Mary. Uh -huh. Now when he came back now, the apostles then were Yeah. Read on. Were assembled for the fear of the Jews. Fear of the Jews. Came Jesus. Came Jesus. And stood in the midst. And stood in the midst. And said unto them. And said unto them. Peace be unto you. Now Jesus now is the same Jesus. Same Jesus. But he have a glorified body. All right. The door was shut. Praise the Lord. And if the door is shut, how he got in? Mm -hmm. In other words, he don't need key to get in. Oh no. He's got a glorified body, a spiritual body now mm. that can appear and disappear. Mm. So Jesus appeared in the midst of them while the door was shut because they shut the door because of fear of the Jews. But Jesus, now the one that died, the first fruit, he came mm. and appeared unto them. Mm. Read on. And when he had, <coughs> when he had so said, when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. He showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad. Then were the disciples glad. When they saw the Lord. When they what? Saw the Lord. So he, he showed them what? His hand. Mm -hmm. He showed them his side. Why? To let them know the one you saw on Golgotha's head on that cross, I'm still the same person. That's me. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Dang. I'm your master. I'm your Lord. Mm -hmm. I told you. Remember what I told you? Mm -hmm. That I must die. Yeah. But on the third day, destroy this temple, and in three days, I, I raise it up again. Yeah. The Jews said 40 and 6 years it took for us to build this building. How are you going to destroy it and build it up in three days? Mm -hmm. This fair key, not of the physical temple that they was looking at, yeah. but the temple Remember now, the Jews now counted what? 12 hours. We count what? 24 hours. But according to the Bible, the first day of the week, and we now we celebrate the same thing, which is Sunday. Mm -hmm. So Sunday, Jesus rose, went to heaven, came back, showed himself to the apostles there so that they can see it's the same Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, 
The reason why I brought this scripture in is to show you that Jesus now is truly the first fruit. Yeah. The first one from the grave mm -hmm. to be resurrected. Now, if he is the first sheep that the understand that the priests wave, mm -hmm. then there is more to come Article. for the harvest. Yes, sir. I like to follow. There is that's just the first installment of the crop. Yeah. But there is more to come. Mm -hmm. Now, go back to first Corinthians now. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. But now is Christ risen from the dead. But now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruit. Become the first fruit of them that slept. But them that slept. For since by man came dead. Now follow this. Since by man came dead. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. Alright, so now Paul is showing, you know, he's contrasting the difference between one that brought dead and one that brought life. Uh -huh. Understand? Now, for sin by man came dead, who is Adam, by man came also what? The, the resurrection man. of the dead. So just like all those that are in Adam are dead, <laughs> all those that are in Christ are alive. Mm -hmm. Now follow this now, read on. For as in Adam, for as in Adam, all die. All die. Even so in Christ. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Shall all be made alive. Now look at the Read on. But every man. But every man. In his own order. In his, yes, that every man in his own order. Uh -huh. Read on. Christ the first fruit. Now, you follow the order, all right? Christ the first fruit. Read on. Afterward. Afterward. They that are Christ. They that are Christ. At his coming. At his coming. So what Paul is saying now, if Jesus rose from the dead, that guarantees us All right. you understand that we now will also be what? Resurrected yes sir now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 All right. verses 13 through 18 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 but I would not but I would not have you to be ignorant mm -hmm. brethren brethren Concerning them, concerning which are them asleep, which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, that ye sorrow not, even as others, even as others, which have no hope, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so don't don't worry about those that fell asleep. Uh -huh. Remember, now the saints don't die; they go to sleep. Yeah. All right, but the the wicked, you understand? We can count them dead. Yeah. Yes, this physical body goes back to the ground. For this we say unto you, 
by the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. That we which are alive. That we which are alive. And remain. And remain. Unto the coming of the Lord. Unto the coming of the Lord. Shall not prevent them. Shall not prevent them. Which are asleep. So those that are asleep. Uh, and those that are those that are alive will not prevent those that are asleep. That's right. Because the Lord Jesus is coming for those that have remained. Yeah. And those that are in the grave. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Read on. For the Lord himself. For the Lord himself. Shall descend from heaven. Where is he coming from? From heaven. He's coming from heaven. With a shout. All right now. He's coming out. There will be a shout. Mm -hmm. And the shout will not be heard by no sinners. No sir. It's just like when the general is getting his army ready for battle. Yeah. The trumpets begin to blow. Mm -hmm. Who is the trumpet blowing for? For his men, for them to gather themselves. Yeah. So the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice. With the voice. Of the archangel. The archangel will give a sound. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't say which archangel, mm -hmm. but who is to say it may be Michael. Yes. 
Verse 9. Let's read it 9. This is what the angel said to Daniel. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. Go thy way, Daniel. Go thy way. For the words are closed up and sealed mm -hmm. till the time of the end. The time of the end. Many shall be purified. All right. Many shall be what? Purified. And made white. And made what? White. Those that will be purified and made white is the saints. And tried. All right. Is the saints. Because remember now in Revelation chapter 19, it was granted unto them that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Clean and white for the fine linen is the what is the righteousness of the saints. So many shall be purified. And made white. And made white. And tried. All right. Even during the tribulation, many will be tried. Mm -hmm. And even before the tribulation, many of the apostles then almost all except one was martyr or beheaded. Mm -hmm. Read on. But the wicked but the wicked shall do wicked. Shall do wickedly and none of the wicked and none of the wicked shall understand. Shall understand. But the wise shall understand. The wise shall do what? The wise shall what? Understand. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now as we close out again. First truth mm -hmm. Which is the beginning of the celebration of the barley harvest, yes. you understand, represents resurrection. Uh -huh. Jesus is the first fruit. Yes, sir. Because Jesus rose, that guarantees us, the saints, yes. that we now will be what? We also will be what? Resurrected. Yes. Now, let's close out about Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it called Pentecost or 50-day feast? Mm -hmm. Now, the first fruit is the first day. Mm -hmm. Going back to Leviticus, mm -hmm. chapter 23. Mm -hmm. Let's go now to verse So now follow this. When the priest waved the sheep, that was a, on a Sunday. Yeah. Now look at listen to verse 15. This is how you count 50 days. This is how you get Pentecost. And ye shall come unto you. And ye shall come unto you from the morrow. From the marrow after the Sabbath. Alright, now the day after so the day after the Sabbath is Sunday. That's the same day. According to the scripture and their belief, Jesus rose on that day. Mm -hmm. I agree. From the day that he brought the sheep of the way offering. Right, and you shall come unto you from the morrow, yes. which is Sunday, after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep of the way offering, what? Seven, Seven Sabbaths Seven. shall be accomplished. So now, Seven Sabbaths, seven times seven is what? 49. 49. Uh -huh. All right? So this is how you get the 50th day, what is known as the pe uh, Feast of Pentecost. Uh -huh. All right, read on. Even unto the morrow. Even unto the morrow. After the seventh Sabbath. After the seventh Sabbath, which is, is on that Saturday. Shall ye number 50 days. Shall number what? 50 days. So now, this is how you get 50 days, what is known as Pentecost. Yeah. So after the priest waved the sheep offering on that Sunday, they're supposed to count seven Sabbath. Yeah. So seven times seven is 49. Uh -huh. So now, and the day after now uh -huh. would be what? The beginning of a new week, which is Sunday. All right, and that Sunday now represents what? 50 days. You shall offer a new meat. All right, now you're supposed to what? Offer now. Let me explain what, what, what Pentecost means. Pentecost is the beginning of the celebration of the wheat or the grain harvest. All right. Meaning, you understand, because of God's blessing that God blessed them with on the 50th day, they were supposed to celebrate on that day mm. because of the blessing that God blessed them with. Mm. This is why God chose on the 50th day to send the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. 
Because the Holy Ghost repent mm. and be baptized every one of you mm. in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and he shall receive the what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm. So God sent the Holy Ghost on the 50th day, the same period of time where the Jews were celebrating the goodness of God and all of the blessing that God blessed them with. So because they celebrate on that day of the blessings that God blessed them with, God blessed them with the Holy Ghost. All right, all right, all right. So it is a feast. Mm -hmm. Three things about this feast I need to let you know before, before we go. Mm -hmm. Number one, it was a holiday. Mm -hmm. No one was supposed to work. Number two, it was a pilgrim journey. If you notice, on the day of Pentecost, there were men from every, from devout men, from every nation under the earth. Yeah. So these people traveled from their homeland where? To Jerusalem. Yeah. Because Jerusalem is the place that God placed his name there. Uh -huh. So now they would travel there and there would be great celebration. Mm -hmm. Many people would be in the street. Many people would be there celebrating the goodness of the Lord mm -hmm. and all of the blessing that God has blessed them with. Mm -hmm. So God chose that same day that they are rejoicing in the blessing that God blessed them with to send the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So when the Holy Ghost came on that same day, they heard the noise. Mm -hmm. So when they heard the noise coming from the upper room, they began to inquire what meaning Wine. They said maybe they're drunk with new wine. Peter said, no, we are not drunk because this is only what? The third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Praise the Lord. And ain't no shop open yet. But this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. That in the last day said God, I will pour out of Get me Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. Oh, yeah. Joel chapter 20, chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Getting ready to close out. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass afterward. Afterward. And I will pour out my spirit. Praise the Lord. After the ascension, after Jesus goes, I will do what? Pour out. Notice the Lord could not pour out the Spirit while Jesus was still here. No, sir. Jesus said now in the book of John chapter number 7, mm -hmm. He that believeth on me, uh -huh. as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living waters. This said he, you understand, he's not talking about physical water, but this said he of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He was saying that the Holy Ghost was not given yet because Jesus was not yet glorified. Yeah. But Jesus said, if I go away, mm -hmm. I will send the comforter. In other words, it is expedient for me to go mm -hmm. because if I don't go, the comforter shall not come. That's right. But if I depart, I will pray the Father that he will send back another comforter that he will be with you forever. While I'm talking, mm. all of you Muslims that believe Muhammad is that is that um, one that, G, that God said? Mm. Jesus said, the Holy Ghost shall be with you yeah. and he going to be in you. Yeah. So how is he Muhammad? Mm. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Ghost descended on the day of what? Of Pentecost. Mm. Which is 50 days, the 50th day of the celebration. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost came and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit was. What did those men begin to inquire? Mm -hmm. They were able. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, the apostles were able to speak in different languages. Yeah. 
So everybody that came from different nations heard the apostles then speaking in their language. Their own tongue. In their own tongue. So if they spoke Chinese, when they were at Jerusalem, the apostles then spoke Chinese. Yeah. So that, the, uh, let me explain, I believe I explained it. The reason why the Holy Ghost equipped them to do that is because the gospel had to travel around the world. Yes, sir. So that when they go into a nation that they don't know to speak their language, the Holy Ghost equipped them and helped them to speak in their native language, even though the apostles then was from Jerusalem. This is why they said, have we, these men are Galileans. Yeah. How hear we, every man speak uh, in our own language. Where we were born. Where we were born. So the Holy Ghost helped them to speak in their tongues, in those men native tongues from their homeland that they came. All right, let's close out. Praise the Lord. So now, so now, this is where we want to close up. Remember this now. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. God sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Uh -huh. And the day and Pentecost represents what? 50 day of feast. Yeah. All right, it was a time of celebration and it was a time for them to be grateful and appreciate the blessings that God had blessed them with. Mm -hmm. So God decided on that day to send the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I just explained to you how you arrive at 50 days. Yeah. Seven, seven, um, seven. Right. Seven times seven is 49. Yeah. Now, after Jesus rose, if I make no mistake, he walked on the earth for 40 days. Mm -hmm. And after 40 days, he was gone. So after 40 days, you're left with what? 10 days. So now, from when Jesus was taken up until that Sunday, according to calculation, Jesus ascended on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. He ascended on a Thursday because if you count now, you understand, according to the seventh Sabbath, that Thursday now, from that time, would give you 10, 10 more days from that day. Because mm -hmm. 40 plus 10 equals what? 50. Yeah. So according to calculation, if I'm correct, Jesus ascended on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then 10 days after, which will bring you up unto that 50th day okay. that is known as the day of Pentecost. Uh -huh. Alright. All right. I know I've said so much tonight. And you got to sit down and you got to digest it. Don't try to understand it in just one night. Mm -hmm. You have to study this thing real good. Yeah. Study it real good. Now, there's more information we're going to bring up. We can't cover everything tonight. Praise the Lord. But we'll bring up more. Amen. If the Lord say the same, mm -hmm. come this Friday. So may God bless you. Mm -hmm. May heaven smile upon you. May God give you peace. Is our prayer. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen.